Yes, what the packet tells you is that um, this is the central thrust or essence of the play capturing the director's attitude towards the text. Now, you don't have text. The guy who came up with this is Bertolt Brecht, okay? And Brecht's idea of theater, the purpose of theater, was for social change to occur, okay? So it wasn't to tell happy stories or to make an audience have a catharsis. He didn't want you to have a catharsis. He wanted you to see whatever his play was and then go out and do something to correct the social wrong that was going on in the play. That's what he wanted. That doesn't necessarily have to be what your takeaway is. Okay? It, that's fine. It might be a message. It might be um, you want them to take away sadness, okay? It could be something cathartic. It could be something you want them to do or one point about the story you want them to take away. Now I want to talk about justice. Justice. Okay. It is not served. It's not served. <laughs> okay. So justice is a difficult word to translate from German, but it has two sort of words that it sounds like. Can you think of what they are? Okay, as, let's, as you're typing, I'm going to talk. Okay, so justice it kind of whittles down to attitude or point. Okay, and the, below the one aspect of the relation, blah, 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 is the sort of direct translation of what Breck's definition of it was. And to me, that wording is a little confusing. Is it confusing to any of you all? A little. A little. Wait, what word? One aspect of the relation between two people studied singly, cut to essentials, and physically or verbally expressed. Yeah, that's really wow. cool. Cool. That's okay, convoluted. Cool. So Sounds kind of German so, to me. So it's really just a is it basically like this? Is it like basically the justice is how uh, underneath the, the very rudimentary how two people feel about each other? Kind of. Kind of. For Here's what it is. Focus more on this attitude or point part. Okay. Justice is the essential action of the play. Now, you're doing tableaus, so you have one picture that tells the most important moment of the story. Yeah. Okay, without that picture, uh, the story like doesn't. The it could be the climax, it might be the resolution. Okay, it kind of depends on what your, um, the object of your fable is. What's the one thing you want your audience to take away? Okay, so. I want you to think about, of all your tableaus, is there an essential action? So again, the first thing you want to think about when you're writing the fairy tale fable of your story is who's the protagonist and who is the antagonist. How do you get it to turn like that? I take my two fingers and I rotate it. It is a word. You have to have the hand tool on. Again, what is the setting? And try and make it as specific as possible. Not just a park, but a glade. An enchanted meadowland. Yes, a theme is an overarching repeated idea that kind of encompasses your story. It is not amoral, and it, it, according to Katie, it's not a motif. Sorry, I was thinking about literature, and then I was like, wait, theater. There, but theater falls under literature a bit. Okay, so what is the repeated idea? Does it relate to what you want your audience to take away? It may or may not. Wouldn't that just be the same thing as the one thing you want your audience to take away? I literally just said that. It may be the thing that you want your audience to take away. Katie, but it may not. What are you Katie, doing go sleep. With your life? Go sleep, Katie. Okay. Some people's uh, thing they wanted their audience to take away was a moral, and we know that a moral is not a theme. So is it a theme the same thing as what we wrote for the morning? Again, oh. <laughs> yes, it could be, but just like a, a rectangle is a square, I'm sorry, a square is a rectangle, <laughs> a rectangle is not a square. Not all rectangles are squares. Uh, a math major here. Okay. Children. What you're going to do... Fill in the blanks using this seven-point story. Okay? You're giving your own fable. This is your fable. Your director's point of view of the story. Okay? The story we just read. The, no. The story that you're creating. Okay? So, again, 
This is a simple plot summary, and it's intended to reflect the essential action of your tableau as the director, how you want the audience to perceive it. So if you were going to tell the story of Little Red Riding Hood, you would tell it traditionally. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Little Red Riding Hood, and every uh, day she, or every week she went to visit her grandma. And one week, she you know, met a big bad wolf. Okay? Cool. However, if you decided that you're really looking, you're telling the story from the big bad wolf's point of view, every, once upon a time, there was a big bad wolf. And every day, he went to the forest to hunt for little girls to eat. Oh, man, okay. Gone really weird. So really again, something. this is your director's version of the story. It's a very particular kind of diet. The review for <laughs> it's a very particular kind of diet. So, While you're writing, I'm going to read you one of the examples so you have an idea of what a fully developed one looks like. Right now, you're writing the seven sentence version, basically. Seven, seven, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sentence version. Sorry, uh, but you can flesh this out. Uh, and you will until a slightly longer paragraph. Okay. So here's the example. The Fable of Mick Mudtracks. There are three women who thought that their lives would be better than the generation before them. These women, although living different lives, made the same mistakes. Who wants to face the fact that your family is stuck in a cycle of abuse? Within a family of three women, there is a storm that has been brewing for many years due to their denial of the problems in their relationships with men. The lives of Pearl, the grandmother, Alma, mother of Jesse, and Jesse are so similar because it all boils down to the control they yearn for in their own lives and the control the men in their lives hold over them. In an effort to survive the terrible ordeals that each of them has endured, each woman has their own way of trying to control their emotions because they just want to survive. Alma denies all problems in her past with men and her own daughter's current problems. Sorry. I thought I looked at my picture. <laughs> Except when she is in private. Because she is unable to discuss these issues uh, due to her fear of reliving those events, Jessie, of a younger generation, decides to leave her man, Ben, actually taking some action to protect herself. But as fated with these women, he finds her at a motel and keeps her there to teach her a scary lesson of abuse. Jessie left in order to help herself, so Ben takes this opportunity to help himself to a position of power and control, probably because Jessie was the only thing in his life that he could control. Pearl has been through it all, and because of her knowledge, she is able to recognize problems that are occurring in her children's lives. Pearl uses passive-aggressive behavior and humor to, in order to smooth over her pain. She's always trying to help her children the best way she knows, because she can see the pain and she knows how that feels. Each generation has their own tragedy, so the cycle continues because these lives are the only lives these women have ever known. Who in this family of denial is going to listen? The cycle of abuse and denial continues. Okay, so it tells the story, so talks good. about the theme, which is a cycle of abuse, and so on.